is his son, Cameron Collins, and Steven Zarsky, the father of Cameron's fiance. These charges are a reminder that this is a nation of laws and that everybody stands equal before the bar of justice. Now I'd like to go into the details of the allegations a little more. In addition to serving in the House of Representatives, Congressman Collins was also on the board of directors of Innate Immunotherapeutics, a publicly traded company that was developing a drug for multiple sclerosis. In June of 2017, Congressman Collins was told some confidential and highly sensitive information about Innate, information that was not yet made public. Namely, that Innate's main drug, the drug Innate was developing to be the backbone of its company, was a total failure. This was devastating information for the company. Congressman Collins had an obligation, a legal duty, to keep that information secret until that information was released by the company to the public. But he didn't keep it secret. Instead, as alleged, he decided to commit a crime. He placed his family and friends above the public good. Congressman Collins was a major investor in Innate, and so was his son Cameron. The congressman knew he couldn't sell his own shares for personal and technical reasons, including that he was already under an investigation regarding Innate by the Congressional Ethics Office. The crime that he committed was to tip his son Cameron so that Cameron and a few select others could trade on news while the investing public remained in the dark. As the indictment alleges, that's exactly what they did. His son Cameron sold. Cameron's fiance sold. The father of the fiance, Zarsky, sold. Mr. Zarsky's wife sold. Other friends and relatives sold. And be all because Congressman Collins violated his duty to keep Innate's information secret. And when the news of the drug's failure became public, the stock plummeted. In total, the conspirators used the inside information to avoid over $750,000 in losses. But Congressman Collins couldn't keep his crime a secret forever. The FBI asked to interview him, and instead of telling the truth, he lied. And so did Cameron Collins, and so did Steven Zarsky. By lying to the FBI, they compounded their insider trading crime with the crime of criminal cover-up. Now I'd like to go over to these two charts which summarize some of the allegations in the indictment. This first chart is a tipping chain. It demonstrates the flow of the illegal insider information and the trading, the illegal trading of that information. At the top of the chain is Congressman Collins. He had an obligation as a Nate board member when he received confidential corporate, corporate information to keep that information secret until the company announced it to the public. In total disregard of that obligation, minutes after Congressman Collins received the devastating, highly confidential news that Innate's drug had failed its drug trial, Congressman Collins tipped that inside information to his son so that his son could trade. Cameron Collins, when he received that illegal inside information, he did two things, both of which are illegal. He sold stock based on that inside information 
and avoided $570,000 in losses. And he also took that illegal inside information and tipped others. He tipped his fiance. He tipped his fiance's wife. He tipped his fiance's father. And he tipped a friend, all of whom traded on that illegal inside information. Steven Zarsky, his fiance's father, avoided $143,000 in losses by trading on that information, and he tipped others. He tipped his brother, he tipped his sister, and he tipped a friend, two of whom traded on the information, one attempted to trade on the information, but was unable. In total, the conspirators avoided losses of over $768,000, all because of the initial illegal insider trading tip by Congressman Collins. In this chart, we set some of the key allegations in the indictment against a timeline, a backdrop of the innate share price. On the evening of June 22nd, 2017, Congressman Collins was at a congressional picnic. And at 6.55, he received an email from the CEO of Innate informing him of the horrendous news that the drug had failed its trial. At 7.10 p.m., Congressman Collins responded to that email. So as the indictment alleges, at least at 7.10 p.m., Congressman Collins was aware of the inside information. A minute later, Congressman Collins attempts to call his son. In a period of five minutes, there are six unsuccessful calls. On the seventh call, at 7.16 p.m., as alleged in the indictment, Congressman Collins tips, illegally tips his son Cameron about the drug trial results so that his son Cameron could trade on those results. Later that evening, on June 22nd, after Cameron Collins has the illegal insider trading information, Cameron Collins drives with his fiance to his fiance's parents' house. They arrive at the house at 9.17 p.m. Less than 20 minutes later, at 9.34 p.m., the fiance's mother is on the phone with her broker beginning the process of selling her shares of innate. The next morning on June 23rd at 7.42 a.m., Cameron Collins begins the process of selling his shares of innate. During June 23rd and June 26th, Cameron Collins sells approximately 1.39 million shares of innate prior to the market close of June 26th. After the market closes, Innate announces to the public that its drug had failed the trial. And the next day, the drug price, the price of Innate, falls off the cliff. It drops 92% in value in a single day. This was the drop that was anticipated by the co-conspirators. This was the drop in value that the co-conspirators avoided by selling their shares before the public announcement. And they could only sell those shares by virtue of the initial tip of inside information by Congressman Collins. A case of this type and significance obviously involves the SEC and the FBI. And their representatives are standing up here with me today to my left is my good friend Bill Sweeney, the assistant director in charge of the FBI's New York field office. And to the far left is John Brosnan, 
the special agent in charge of the FBI New York Office Criminal Division. The FBI's work on this case was spectacular, and I want to thank them for their professionalism and dedication. We work with the FBI on so many important cases, and it is always a privilege. To the left of Bill is, is Stephanie Avakian and Steve Pekin, who are co-directors of the SEC's Division of Enforcement. I want to thank them and the SEC for their hard work on this matter. Last, I want to acknowledge and thank the career prosecutors in my office handling the case. To my right is Max Nicholas, Damian Williams, Bob Allen, Scott Hartman, and the co-chiefs of our Securities and Commodities Fraud Task Force, Tim Kasoulis and Jason Cowley. Congressman Collins, who by virtue of his office helps to write the laws of our nation, acted as if the law didn't apply to him. The charges today demonstrate once again that no matter what the crime and no matter who committed it, we stand committed in the pursuit of justice without fear or favor. I would now like to invite to the podium Bill Sweeney. Thank you, Jeff, and good afternoon, everybody. U.S. Representative Christopher Collins sat on an eights board of directors for a period of more than three years, spanning the run-up to the drug trial announcement in mid-2017. Collins himself was the company's largest shareholder. In or about the summer of 2017, a drug designed to treat a debilitating form of multiple sclerosis had entered the late stages of a phase 2B clinical trial. This drug, MIS-416, was the only viable drug in the pipeline for an eight. This is significant in that the company's value was nearly completely wrapped up in the success of the clinical trial and a subsequent phase three trial. On the evening of June 22, 2017, Collins received an email informing him that MIS-416 had failed its clinical trial. Electronic records indicate his initial shock at having received the news. The drug once anticipated to hold billions of dollar in value would now be the cause of significant financial loss for Innate and, of course, its investors, many of whom shared a personal relationship with Congressman Collins. While, Cong while the Congressman was legally bound to keep his information confidential until the trial results were released to the investing public four days later on June 26, we allege he did not. The indictment charges that Collins immediately began contacting the family and friends he had bought into the fold. This set off a ripple effect in which many investors, directly or indirectly connected to Congressman Collins, were notified. Most of them quickly sold their shares. An eight stock price plummeted 92 percent on the first trading day following the public announcement. But Collins' conspirators had saved themselves over $750,000 in losses. Collins himself, having been prohibited from selling his shares for various reasons, did not avoid a financial loss. Despite this fact, his alleged actions brought him face to face with federal agents who had become aware of the crime that had been committed. When questioned by law enforcement about the alleged dealings, Congressman Collins, his son Cameron, Cameron's fiance's father, Stephen Zarsky, lied plain and simple. Today, they are charged with insider trading and lying to federal law enforcement agents. While Collins may have thought that giving his family and friends a heads up about material, non-public information would benefit them in the long run, here's a better inside tip for those who think they can play by a different set of rules. Access to this kind of information carries with it significant responsibility, especially for those in society who hold a position of trust. Act honorably and in accordance with the law and do not lie to special agents of the FBI. Many thanks always to our partners, especially Jeff and your team of career prosecutors. Gentlemen, your work has been exceptional. To the SEC, I'd personally like to thank Stephanie and Steve for your work. Your team has also been outstanding. 
to John and John Cassell who lead our white collar branch, and to your team of special agents and investigators, I want to uh, extend my personal appreciation. Some are standing in the back in the shadows, but to Nick, John, Yelena, and Tracy, your work has been exceptional. What you do in the community matters and makes a difference. Thank you. I'd like to invite to the podium Stephanie Avakian, co-director of enforcement at the SEC. Thanks, Jeff. Good afternoon. As Jeff said, my name is Stephanie Avakian, and I'm co-director of the SEC's Division of Enforcement. And before I begin my remarks, I'd like to also thank U.S. Attorney Jeff Berman and his prosecutors, as well as the FBI, who worked on this matter for their assistance. Today, the SEC filed securities fraud charges against Congressman Christopher Collins, his son Cameron Collins, and three others, alleging that they engaged in insider trading ahead of innate immunotherapeutics announcement of negative drug trial results in June 2017. The SEC's complaints allege that Christopher Collins learned of the negative news in his capacity as a member of innate's board of directors and quickly tipped Cameron Collins who held a large position in innate stock. In addition to Cameron Collins selling nearly 1.4 million of his own innate shares, he is alleged to have tipped his girlfriend, defendant Lauren Zarsky, her mother, defendant Dorothy Zarsky, and her father, <coughs> defendant Steven Zarsky. The SEC further alleges that Steven Zarsky, after trading in his own account, further tipped his sibling and a friend. The SEC's complaints seek disgorgement of the defendant's ill-gotten gains, interest, penalties, and permanent injunctions. The SEC also seeks an order barring Christopher Collins from serving as an officer or director of a public company. Being a director of a public company is a privilege, a privilege that comes with responsibilities. Christopher Collins is alleged to have abused this privilege and breached his responsibilities by engaging in illegal insider trading. Defendants Lauren Zarsky and Dorothy Zarsky, whom the SEC alleges each avoided losses by selling all of their innate shares in advance of the company's negative announcement, have each agreed to settle the charges against them by consenting to injunctions, disgorging their ill-gotten gains, and paying civil penalties. Lauren Zarsky, a certified public accountant, has also agreed to be suspended from practicing before the commission as an accountant for a period of at least five years. Accountants who engage in illegal insider trading should not serve in the role of gatekeeper in our securities markets. The settlements are subject to court approval. And now let me turn things over to Stephen Pekin, co-director of the Enforcement Division, for some additional remarks. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, first off, I'd like to commend the excellent work of the SEC staff members who handled this investigation and who will handle the litigation going forward. They're William Max Hathaway. Colby Steele, Patrick McCluskey, Carolyn Welshans, Melissa Armstrong, and Cheryl Crumpton. The SEC's Insider Trading Enforcement Program is a great success. We have successfully detected and pursued insider trading schemes of all shapes and sizes, from massive international schemes to trade on information stolen through cyber intrusions to those perpetrated by a single faithless insider. <clears throat> In the past five years alone, thanks to the staff's hard work, its ever-developing expertise, and its use of highly effective proprietary analytical tools, the SEC has filed more than 250 insider trading cases against more than 450 individuals. Today's case is another example of the staff's dedication and know-how. At the heart of this action, as described in our complaint, is a tipping chain that extends from Christopher Collins to his son Cameron Collins to members of the Zarsky family and beyond. When members of the SEC's Market Abuse Unit, a specialized group within the Division of Enforcement, uncovered suspicious trading by Cameron Collins, they did not stop there. As you heard, they identified well-timed trades by people close to him, including his girlfriend, her mother, her father, and her father's relative and friend. In addition to finding the trading at the core of this action, the staff who worked on this matter, working alongside the talented prosecutors here in the Southern District of New York and the dedicated men and women of the FBI, developed a thorough and compelling evidentiary record. 
That record, which is summarized in the SEC's complaints, consists of emails and text messages, cell phone records, trading data, communications, including recorded calls with brokerage firms, IP logon information, and other. It reflects frantic efforts by tippers to convey inside information and traders to sell their innate shares before the company's negative news announcement. As alleged in our complaints, the defendants and their tippies accounted for over half of innate's entire trading volume on the first trading day after they got the news, and Cameron Collins himself accounted for more than half of all the innate shares sold on the next trading day. Insider trading is not just illegal, it is also corrosive. It threatens investor confidence in the fairness and integrity of our markets. For our capital markets to retain their place as the envy of the world, the SEC and its law enforcement colleagues must be vigilant in policing against this misconduct. Those who would engage in this sort of behavior should know that we will continue to devote our resources, our expertise, and our energy to finding them and seeking to hold them accountable. Thank you. We'll take your questions. Yes. Was there a wiretap involved here? And if not, how did you discover that the congressman had lied to you uh, about the conversation with his son? Uh, there's no allegation of a uh, wiretap in this case. And with respect to the details of the evidence that are not contained in the indictment, uh, DOJ policy restricts me to the four corners of the indictment, so I'm not going to get into proof of trial. Is it true that the congressman promoted this bill to or the company to other members of Congress? And are any other members of Congress under investigation? That is not an aspect of, uh, uh, of this indictment. I have no comment. Sir, the indictment talks about where the phone calls were made from and where he first learned this. Can you describe for us uh, at this picnic and, and was he inside when he received it? Was he outside of the picture for us about this? Well, the. the, 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 the the indictment alleges that on the evening of June 22, 2017, when Congressman Collins uh, received the information via an email from the CEO of Innate, that he was at the congressional picnic and that uh, it was from that picnic that he then uh, tried to reach his son uh, six attempts in five minutes and then on the seventh attempt he got through to his son and he uh, it is alleged in the indictment that he Ill illegally relayed the results of that drug test so that his son could trade on that information. And that was all done, as alleged in the indictment, at the congressional picnic. Uh, was he using a cell phone or did he use a White House phone? Uh, I, I, the indictment does not specify the phone that he used, and I, I don't think I'm, a, I'm allowed under DOJ policy to go outside the four corners of the indictment. Sir, the indictment says that there are a number of co-conspirators. Are any of those co-conspirators cooperating with your office at this time? I have no comment on that. Um, so I just want to get a better understanding of how this decided to be investigated at your office in the SEC and the FBI. Is this referral from the Congressional Ethics Office? Uh, I'm not going to. Yeah, I'm not going to get into uh, how uh, this matter was referred to our office. Yes. The congressman's statement said he didn't make any trades. Uh, the complaint says that he uh, spoke with his, with his son with the anticipation that his son would then act on the tip. How do you go about proving that anticipation? Was knowing what do you need to prove? Knowing what what will the uh burden the barrier and what evidence do you have? Well, yeah, the indictment alleges that the congressman conveyed the illegal inside information anticipating that his son uh, was going to trade on that information. And I, I can't get into the evidence of trial right now. I can't go beyond the four corners of the indictment. Um, we're about three months away from a congressional election. Does your office have any concerns about um, releasing this indictment now and that potentially looking political, politically promoted? Well, politics does not enter into our decision making on uh, charging a case. We bring a case when the case is ready to be brought. That being said, we are cognizant 
of the potential concerns surrounding an election. But you know, here we are months away from the election and those concerns do not apply. Sir, can you talk about fines, fines and jail time? Uh, the you know, uh, it's premature to discuss those matters. Are there any other people currently under investigation with interest in the stock, possibly in the currently Trump administration or formerly Trump administration or congressional members? Anyone uh, else under investigation? I have, I have no comment on that. How come the SEC chose the name uh, Lauren Zarsky, Dorothy Zarsky, by well, uh, you know, the SEC has uh, its investigation. It's a civil uh, uh, investigation they're conducting. We're conducting a criminal investigation with a, a different uh, standard of proof. And so uh, I'm not getting into the various factors that go into our decisions on whether to charge or not charge someone. But, you know, they're, 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 they're different uh, investigations. Last yes. Has your office previously shared any of the information from this investigation with the Ethics Committee that's investigating Collins? Uh, we have not. Thank you. Thank you. I want to grab a picture of the single one. Right? Sure thing. FYI, I need to see before him. Yeah.